Welcome, everybody, to the first episode of Talk A Good Game. This is a brand new show where I welcome our esteemed guests from the gaming community to answer and give you insight about some of the newest and most popular games while blitzing them with some of the most important questions about the industry. For our first episode, we will be headed to space to talk about Mass Effect. This critically acclaimed space opera RPG by Bioware took the world by storm in 2007 and influenced many games of today. The game instantly propelled Bioware into the conversation as one of the best game studios. So how could something that had such an effect and influence on gaming disappear? This is one of the many questions that will be answered. Today, I have with me a good friend and an amazing content creator who does deep character and theme analysis on games like Mass Effect, Starfield, Witcher, and so much more. Without further ado, Ty Talks. Let's get into it. So first, let me know about yourself a little bit. How'd you get into it? Because, yeah, I, I mostly know you for Mass Effect. Like, that was, like, your thing. Especially, that was the first video that got me into your channel. So how did that come about? How did I get into Mass Effect? Well, initially, um, when Mass Effect 1 came out, I actually wasn't interested. Now, I did like sci-fi as a whole, but I just didn't gravitate towards it. It was Mass Effect 2 that pretty much caught my attention. I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure why um, it differed from Mass Effect 1. I think it was probably more to do with the fact that um, I probably wasn't playing any other game at that time. So it was just a... It was just easy, easy for me to get into Mass Effect, and once once I picked it up, it was um, it was a perfect marriage between let's say my favorite genre and what I love about video games, right? Which is the storytelling element, and then you have this situation where you can choose how to progress the game in terms of you know do I side with this character, or do I um, do I react in a negative way to this um, um, person? I, j I just love that element, that choose your own choose your own adventure kind of story. So it really, um, it, it really, I guess you could say, it maybe just kind of fall in love with the game, right? Uh, Mass Effect 3 came out as well, amazing game. Um, loved every bit of it. The ending is really um, coming by surprise. I think it's probably one of the first games I played where the ending really um, hit me. I, I chose the red option, and I guess it was just the fact that like, you know, everything was destroyed. And it was, it was not a happy ending. I expected a happy ending. I didn't get it. What really brings you back is, you know, the characters and the, and the stories, like every, anything that involves Morgan, Miranda, um, Ashley, um, Tally, Liara, and some characters might not have um, a, a great um, race story, right? So, for example, if you look at the quarries, um, everything about the, the forgotten world with the Geth, you know, that's interesting as, as a concept. And you look at the, um, the Krogans with the Genophage as a concept that makes that race very interesting. But when you look at you know characters like um, Liara, like as a group, like you don't really think the Asari's are interesting. I mean they are, but they don't really have a story like like in the same way the the, the Cormans do. But it's also just a character, and I think that's what makes that um, Mass Effect special. Definitely, after because I was telling you about it preparing for this interview was I went back. I was like you, but I was even later than you. I just played Mass Effect for the first time, and I can see how much influence it had on so many RPGs. Like I love the relationship with the characters. That was the shining point in Cyberpunk that I loved. Those characters, when you left, when you said the goodbye, I was like, whoa. Like, whoa, this, like, when I said bye to Judy, I was like, nah, like, don't go. Like, we let, let's go on some, let's go do some more stuff. Oh, man, you get, you get into <laughs> spoilers now. People are not going to be happy with that. Um, But no, like, 100%. And it's what it's one of the main reasons why I actually really enjoyed Cyberpunk. Because even though they might have dropped the ball on certain aspects, um, you know, for me, the main thing was they said this was going to be a, a you know i remember this line so well it, it was this lady in the in the ad saying you know welcome to the next level next generation of rpg games and it didn't feel anything like a next generation level of rpg <laughs> games 
Um, but regardless of that, Cyberpunk was a, it was a good game, um, regardless of what anyone says. Um, CD Projekt Red does something quite similar to Bioware. In fact, that, like they they tell really good stories, really good side characters, and that's where for me Cyberpunk excels at as well. It has really good interesting characters, as you mentioned, Judy, Pam. Um, it's just so many characters and so many interactions um, that keeps you engaged with the story. So the main the main story with Mass Effect and the main story with Cyberpunk or sorry CD Projekt Red games that might not be great in itself. Even though Witcher's main story was not, yeah. uh, I mean it was okay, but it's always the side characters, the side content that that that, that keeps you coming back, right? So um, yeah, to your point, um, I completely agree with you. CD Projekt Red, I put okay. up there as well when okay. it comes to storytelling. So what was what would you say is your favorite Mass Effect game, at least out of the main trilogy? Well, I th- I think they're all good for different um, reasons. To be honest, um, I'll say for me, it's always going to be Mass Effect Two, and th- th- there's a bit of biasness in that, just because it was the first Mass Effect game I played, so it kind of set the standard. And I remember playing Mass Effect Three, and for me, it was a really good game, but it wasn't better than Two until the ending. And it- it's it's maybe a controversial take to a bit, but the reason why Three was so um, interesting to me or special was because i didn't expect the endings yeah. right i didn't expect that destroy ending i didn't expect to, um everything to play out like that and the fact that there was all this weight in your decisions that you made so you can actually say oh wow okay if i choose this ending this is the outcome it, there was no happy ending and that really caught me by surprise as well so i would say i, I i'm on par with two and three i think th- they're both the same but the only reason why i'm giving three that nudge is just because the ending kind of completely completely coming by surprise from a gameplay perspective, story perspective, I mean, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed three, and once again, it's it's always gonna be the the side stories that you remember, right? So when you're dealing with uh, Morden, with with the Jennifer question, when you're dealing with the um, whenever you have to deal with um, the I was gonna say the Osiris, sorry, the the Quarians, you know, um, and and Legion. It's whenever you, whichever game is going to have those kind of difficult questions, it's always going to like get the notch. Oh, sorry, get the notch. Okay. Again, when I was playing it, it was just so impressive how ahead Bioware was. At least it, it's hard for me to, I don't, I don't want to like give them all the credit because I wasn't playing a lot of RPGs at that time. But just looking at the timing, it I really feel like this this game was so influential and how talented this team was. And to see that Mass Effect hasn't really it, it, it just isn't brought up today like that. It, it's just so interesting to see what happened to that company and the I guess you would say it, it, its downfall. And hiccups, because we all know the history of what happened after Mass Effect 3. You know, a lot of people put a lot of flack on Andromeda, right? And they kind of point to the fact that, um, you know, it lost its its way, which which it kind of did. But to be honest, the fans were quite upset with Mass Effect 3 ending in the first place. So I think Bioware was kind of um, in a position where um, there was a little bit of, bit of a disconnect with the fans, right? And Mass Effect Andromeda was... At least with the fans, you can say there was a disagreement on the way the endings panned out. With Mass Effect Andromeda, the, the team clearly focused on different aspects. They, from the reports we've seen or the, or the leaks or the whatever you want to call it, um, they wanted they, they were ambitious. I'll give them that. They were they had grandiose plans for Mass Effect, so they wanted to nail down this idea of um, of um, exploring multiple different planets. Um, no man's sky like um, from, from what I heard um, it probably wasn't going to be Quintin and planets like whatever um, Sean Murray's team were doing but th- th- there was a lot they were trying to do there procedural generated planets they wanted you to explore multiple different um, different types of planets which was I mean on paper it sounds maybe interesting right cool um, but I think what really happened there is they just kind of forgot what why the fans played these games why the fans loved these games why I was interested in these games now they maybe have they maybe felt like we already got this locked down, we already got the story parts locked down. Like we're bioware, like this is gonna rock. So we want to fix, we want to kind of plan ahead and focus on the other aspects that we're not so good at. 
But the problem was um, the people who were involved with the, with the original trilogy, they weren't there anymore. So if they're not there anymore, then those packs that you taught you had locked down, you actually don't. So you, you should just double down on that and focus on that aspect. Um, they were working on procedure generated planets for, I think, a couple of years or so. And it just didn't pan out. They're working on flight controls, something that we might see, something we're going to see in Starfield. And it didn't pan out. And I think it really looks at management. I'm not looking at EA as the cause of this. I think EA gave them the reins to do whatever they want to do. And they did. It's just it didn't pan out. So it gets to the point where years have been wasted. Trying to, um, you know, fix flying in the game, trying to make it interesting and fun trying to create all these um, crazy planets. So at some point, they have to scale the game back down. Now, throwing the fact that Frost, um, they're using the Frostbite engine, which isn't ideal for an RPG game. And I, and I get it. Like I, Once again, I'm already blaming EA too much, right? Because I believe Dragon Age um, Inquisition was used on Frostbite. Now, that, that doesn't mean the, Frost, the engine was great, but still, I understand why EA wants to push its development teams to use Frostbite. Like, you know, they developed that um, that that mm-hmm. engine, and it just makes sense that they want the teams to use it. Um, but it, it did contribute as well to um, Mass Effect Andromeda being the way it is, and the game was clearly not ready to to be released. Um, but I don't. But I think even if they delayed it, the fundamental issue with the game is the actual um, dialogue. The, the writing is off. I don't think you could. I don't think any patches would have made that work. Um, you have these amazing concepts. You have these um, races, like you have like the Ket, for example, very very interesting race. I, I think actually, the Ket from a, they're probably one of the most interesting races that Bioware has created. Um, the concept of them, the way they're tied to religion, their their, their desire to 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 take um, bits from other species and then you know insert them into themselves and to create these new kind of like to kind of almost create this super race um it was really interesting um but it, it it's insane because you you meet them and that's pretty much it you don't know nothing you don't learn nothing about their culture you don't learn anything about you know who they are there's no cat individual that makes you reconsider and makes you think, yo, is this good or bad? You know, when you when you think about the Krogans, you might not like the Krogans, but you like Rex probably, right? Um, you might think the Krogans are crazy, but hey, you're cool with Tali. If you think, but that was the issue. There was no cat that made me uh, want to actually like explore them. No, I wanted to explore them, but there was no cat to give me those answers. Um, so that was one misstep. Um. The Angara as well, interesting race. Um, another another um, good creation right there. But and not to go into spoilers, but they have a very good revelation um, as to like who they really are or whatever. And I feel like th- that that idea or that revelation wasn't addressed properly. Like it could have been more interesting. It could have made you really think more. But it didn't. It just it kind of just comes and goes. That was it. And the, the squad mates, though, I won't, I won't fault the squad mates too much because I think the more you play the game, and if you play Mass Effect maybe five and six or whatever with, with the same squad mates, you're going to end up um, enjoying the company a lot more. You're going to end up liking them. But there were some that were irritating. <laughs> some of them were just a bit like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> like, why are you, you trying to piss me off on purpose? Like, what's going on here? Um, but overall, I, I was okay with the squad. Um, but once again, it's, it's this idea of um, the Pathfinders, right? It's another interesting um, story point. And then you have Alec Ryder, who's you know the Pathfinder. Now, now you, as his child, as his child, has been you know um, you're now the leader. How does like that's like nepotism, yeah? So how do we make that interesting? How do we deal with that question? How do the people we need people to yeah. start questioning you as a, as a player? And it comes up like once and then it disappears. Like that's just it. It's just like gone. Um, crazy how like that's not um, spoken about more. Someone, one, one member of your teammate does question it a little bit. But once again, it comes and goes. You know, that should be, that should be a consistent theme throughout. Then it's okay, fine. Like, you know, who sponsored this trip? What's going on here? And don't get me wrong. They did hint that like we'll get the answers to Mass Effect and Jabba 2. 
The problem is, I think they should have answered most of these questions in Mass Effect Andromeda 1. Um, and they didn't. So the story was off. The, the side content was off. The game was clearly unfinished. And I, I said in one of my videos, Mass Effect fans, will, um, they, they'll, they'll forgive you if you come with a great story and average gameplay. But if it's vice versa, they'll, they'll eat you alive, right? And this is kind of what happened. The gameplay in Mass Effect Andromeda is immense. It's so much, it's so much fun, so interesting. Um, uh, th- th- there's multiple ways to, to tackle enemies, and there's th- th- there's a combo system. Um, it's probably the best combat in the whole entire series. So whoever who worked on the combat, like, well done to you for you know, for creating a great, a great game. But everything else is just... It doesn't mid. all come together. Very, very it mid. Come all, it doesn't all come together. It didn't come together, and it's sad that it didn't, because I, I feel like Mass Effect Andromeda has probably some of the most interesting concepts in, in, in the Mass Effect universe. And the team was probably let down by management. You know, it, it's like, I don't want to say it's similar to cyberpunk, but um, clearly management and a lack of direction overshooting themselves was the issue. And that's why for, for the new Mass Effect game, I'm hoping that they've got the, the base, the core down. They know exactly what they're going to do. Then you can reach out and start expanding. You know, get the story down first, get the gameplay, know exactly what you want to do. And then if you got time and if you think you can implement whatever flying spaceships, go for it. But um, yeah, poor management was an issue. I'm not blaming EA really for what happened with Andromeda. I'm not really blaming. I mean, that was like, I'm not blaming like you know the typical mi- microtransactions, you know, uh, desire to make it multiplayer. No, it was none of that stuff. It was just really poor management, at least from what I've seen anyway. So um, it's a shame. So it's a it's a good game, but but to finish up on this point, d- despite the flaws, um, Mass Effect Andromeda is not a bad game. It's just being compared to a great game. So we have a situation where, for me, the Mass Effect um, trilogy, nine, um, it's nine point five out of ten, nine out of ten. Like it's that good, and Andromeda is just uh, to me, it's a seven, which isn't bad. I think on a good day when you're kind of having fun and you're kind of you know have, having a great time with the game or whatever, you you could probably stretch it to an eight if you really wanted to. But based on I'll say it's a seven out of ten game, and those can be interesting. Like I wouldn't recommend people to not play Andromeda. I just would tell them that, um, yeah, you might like it, you might not. Who cares? Okay. <laughs> you know, it's one of those games. Okay. But yeah. So, so like, basically, what I'm getting at is, if you were, if you were to say one thing that would fix this game would be just fleshing out more of the Mass Effect concepts. Would you say that? I would say if you if you were to fix Mass Effect Andromeda, um, you need to go back to the drum board. Um, go back to what what Mass Effect fans want and like. So you need to go back to the story point um, points. You need to make each character interesting. There needs to be um, activities to do with. Well, maybe not activities, but I need to be able to feel invested in these characters. Um, so I would say. A lot of side missions with them. Mass Effect Andromeda actually had a lot of banter, um, to be honest. But you need to make me care. So I think we need more missions with these characters. We need um, we just need a good story. It doesn't ha- it doesn't have to be a grandiose story, but it needs um, a good story, and it needs these um, concepts to be fleshed out more. I think about the the Angaran people. I need um, a lot more details on them. I need um. I need uh, the characters who I'm interacting with. I need to target them a lot more, to be honest. That, that, I guess that's just it. There just wasn't enough um, time. I didn't care about them. O- I didn't care about them enough. So things just had to fall apart there. I, if I don't care about your characters, then we're not really going anywhere, to be honest. It doesn't really matter what happens. You know, like I mentioned to you about Jacob, right? Um, how I don't hate him. I don't love him either. He's just kind of there. And I think um, that's a, if 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 I feel that way about most of your characters in Mass Effect Andromeda, then that's a problem. I need to love these characters. So you need to uh, make me feel invested in them a whole lot more. I feel you. I feel you. So all that um, spaceship flying and stuff like that. Like, I mean, I think Mass Effect fans would, they wouldn't mind that, but I think they will always care about the story. If you know the story first and foremost, you can add anything you want. 
Like they'll, they'll be there. Uh, now with, with Starfield coming out, maybe they'll look at Byron and say, "Hey, you know, we want to be able to fly spaceships too. We want to be able to do all these things." And you know, if freaking um, Bethesda can do it, like you know, you guys should be able to do something similar. Maybe so. But as long as you get the the story points down, they'll always be happy. And anything else is more or less a plus. So yeah. So Mass Effect Andromeda. It comes out in 2017. Mixed critical. I would say, so would you say mixed critical reception? It was more mixed? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. for sure. So mixed critical recep- uh, reception. And this is coming after a controversial ending with Mass Effect 3. Now, to put a nail in the, co- in, nail in the coffin is Anthem. So that comes after mass effect andromeda and you ain't getting anthem didn't get no mixed receptions for the most part it did not it was it was pretty much a it it was pretty much a failure It, it was not it was not well received a lot of people after the game was shipped left the company so they're kind of like like we said this this they came from being at the top and now they're in a position 2023 i would say they're they're kind of at they're not at the bottom but i would definitely say they're they're reconstructing themselves so with that being said they're doing this like at least to me i haven't really seen this before they're like drip feeding mass effect 4 information we know it's still in pre-production because they said that, but it's it's kind of like if you're in pre-production, well, why are you why are you showing stuff? So what I'm alluding to is what is what is going on with Mass Effect Four? Well, what what what's its state? What is what is it going to be about? When what do you hope it to be be about? Mass Effect for um, you know it's it's interesting because f- for me after um, Anthem right Bioware needed to <laughs> I don't want to say do a, maybe a redemption arc right and the way to do that is to get the fans back on your side you know with, with, with Anthem and Mass Effect Andromeda they both kind of turned into a meme people were kind of you know making yeah. jokes about it blah 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 um my that was face the one is tired with, and andromeda had the face memes right yeah the fa- we, my face yeah. is tired um <laughs> but w- w- one thing that which was for me it, the easiest layup was and that's what ea did was to make um mass Effect the legendary edition because it takes the three games that the fans love and it doesn't give it a simple remaster it's, it's not a remake either it's kind of um i don't want to say it's even in between but it 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 takes a bit. It, it takes it, it. It does more than a remaster anyway. And you offer that at a you know sixty sixty bucks, and I think that's a very very fair value for that for that kind of quality of game, and it reminds the fans exactly why they love this game. Now on top of that, you then show a trailer for Mass Effect M four, and you show Liara in that trailer, a fan favorite. And at that point, everybody gets excited again. So whoever who was in charge of the marketing department in, in EA or Bioware, <laughs> they nailed that because the fans were talking again, right? They were interested in this game. They're like, oh, Liara's here. Okay, we're going back to the Milky Way. And that's the key thing. You know, you're kind of alluding to, alluding to the fact that like, hey, this is going to be a sequel to the original trilogy. Um, it, it's, it, it might be a combination of both Andromeda and, uh, and the Milky Way, but the, the fact is, the Milky Way is present, right? It's gonna be, it's it's going back home, and with the details with N seven becomes really interesting because once again, marketing genius, um, they're dropping down, they're dropping this in, this information, and it was crazy when N seven happened because you had all these fans coming together to try to decipher this um, this audio recording, uh, with yeah, the really, hour yeah. talking. So the, the the fan base is coming together to to figure this out because you know they're interested, right? And anyone who's interested in Mass Effect wants to hear what's up. They're hearing the hour. They're hearing talk, hear, hear talking about humans. So once again, um, massive class in in marketing. But I think it, for me, the, the biggest win is I don't know 
where this game is going to be based time wise i think you know some people have different theories about it it seems to be shortly after mass effect 3 um but i think the main thing that has me excited about the game is the um the announcement of mary damal as um lead writer and she is the one who worked on um this x she's the one who worked on gardens of the galaxy and if you play those games you know they have they're great they're just great stories so they they have a veteran writer who's amazing working on these games and that's a win right there i think from a story perspective i, I almost expect this to be good i don't think that's going to be an l so for me they have the story part locked down now it's everything that surrounds the game that's important but like i told you if you come with a good story um great characters People are always going to be happy. People are always going to be, um, um, people are always going to be interested in a Mass Effect game. And if it's a great story, then everyone's sorry. If it's a great story, then everyone's happy. Everyone's cool. That like that's what primarily Bi- Bioware fans actually care about, as opposed to anything else. I mean, they, of course, they like the gameplay, right? But that's the main, um, the main pillar. So for Mass Effect Four, um, we don't know any timeline. Uh, we don't know when it's going to come out. But another another point I actually said to them, people is the new Dragon Age um, will actually be an indication of, of how well Mass Effect can do. Is, is Bioware really taking the right steps in the right direction? And the first the first game post anthems uh, post anthem is going to be um, Dragon Age. And if that's a success, then it means they're on the right um, path forward. And I expect Mass Effect to be good too as well. If 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 Dragon Age flops and it's a bad game, then I'll I'll be worried about uh, Mass Effect. It's still, it might be different teams, but I'll I will be worried hundred um, percent. But we'll see. Yeah, it was. I didn't even like. You're right. You're really you hit it on the nail when you said the w- with their marketing and it does. It's starting to click with me now because. When they drop that that image and then the audio for it, you're right. The fans came back. The hardcore fans came back. The people that were in the Reddit, they got to typing away, and it brought the community back. Because obviously, since there's not much going on with Ma- the, with the Mass Effect franchise, everyone has gone on to their own thing talking about other games yeah which is that, obvi- yeah which yeah, is obvious you know, but like, this brought it back it, it felt like oh mass effects coming back we have something to talk about so yeah no you're, you're right i was actually gonna say um so- sometimes you know when uh, when something flops like let's say like the way i drummed it did um you just need to give it time you know let let people kind of forget about it you know and <laughs> then when when you make them think about it again, make them think about it from a positive point of view. And one of the things, um, you know, Ma- Mass Effect Legendary Edition did as well was it made people who okay, let me check out Andromeda, and obviously it's it's, it's patched now, but these people got to um, check it out without this idea of like my face is tired, without everyone just hating on the game. So you play the game for what it was, and then you you pretty much came to a conclusion and said this game wasn't that bad. Like why was everyone tripping for? Why was everyone going crazy? And I think that's um, that didn't help it because I feel like if your game sucks or if it's you know if it has issues in any way, it's gonna turn into a meme, and that meme is just gonna like like you know blow out. So Mass Effect Andromeda is not a bad game. I ha- I've had friends who've played it who weren't you know they're not really into the whole in- they don't really use the internet that, that much. They don't really go on websites, so they played it and then they came back um, online to see what people were saying about the game, and they just couldn't understand the the hate the game got. So once again, the um, the Mass Effect Legendary Edition dropping um, you know all these snippets of Mass Effect Four, um, it really kind of just helped them. The fans feel, um, I was going to say like I was going to say like like a family, but maybe that's a bit too corny. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, just, it, it, it brought the fans together again, and yeah. you know, I'm pretty sure if you were to go on Reddit during this period of time, um, the, the Mass Effect subreddit probably grew. And there's a lot more people commenting on on these games, saying like, "Oh, I miss this character. I miss this game." Because I, I mean, I know I I was getting a lot of. I mean, I made massive content, and during this period of time, all my videos were doing extremely well. So, so yeah, yeah man. great marketing from Bioware for great, sure. Great marketing. And another thing 
that I <laughs> voice crack, but another thing that I think people have not been noticing is this new EA. Like, EA is moving very differently. I think they might have a really good year. I think they might have the best year for, in terms of having critical and commercial success amongst gamers. Because when it comes to single player, they're starting to get it. They're starting to go, all right, we have our money train going with FIFA, Madden, all that stuff, Apex. And we're going to leave that separate. But when it comes to single player, we're going to just let our studios do their thing. We're going to stop interfering and we're going to just let them deliver on what they can do. So I think a lot of people have not been noticing that. And I, I, I think that's a good sign for Mass Effect 4. I would agree with you overall with that point because um, I've, to be honest, I actually agreed with this point a long time ago, but then Battlefield 2040, 2040, 2042 came out, um, and that was not great, yeah. right? People kind of were complaining about that, so I kind of feel like they, they took a step back there. But overall, no, I, I agree. I think they've, they've realized um, exactly what the fans want, and they just re- monetize it. Um, turning franchises, single-player franchises, into, you know, trying to force it into the, down this multiplayer money making machine um it, it's never going to work and i think it was probably um dragon age sorry not dragon age it was anthem that made them realize yeah. this um they took a, a very talented bioware team um that excels at making single player games and they told them your main focus should be the live service stuff you know whatever it is and when 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 you play anthem the first thing that comes to your mind is like who made this <laughs> game like this, it doesn't. It didn't feel like anything like, like their previous works. I agree. Nothing at all. So once again, I think it goes back to like if if you want to make a life service game, whatever, right? But the first thing, if you buy what you do is you lock down the story elements, you lock down the things that you're good at, and then you can start adding these life service parts. It's simple, but it seems like they were just focused on like, okay, fine, let's do the life service um, elements first. And I'm, I'm guessing they were also focused on the gameplay, right? Because it's very different. Like Anthem has a very good structure you know that the flying sequences are great um but clearly they just didn't know how to make a destiny like game right so with, with that failing and jedi fallen order doing extremely well um he just came to the conclusion that hey this is probably the way to go Let, let's keep the the multiplayer life service stuff separate from the single player experiences like there's no point in making a dragon age you know four and it, it's a disaster like it, no one wins there's no point in making uh, a mass effect game that has life service elements no one wins so it seems there is a bit of a separation now um but what i will still say is it's up to I, i'm looking at dragon age 4 to see exactly you know how much um how much okay let me let me take a step back I feel EA has done enough to kind of wash their hands of the idea that they're meddling in Dragon Age 4. Because initially, I think the game was supposed to be a life service kind of game as well. And it got rebooted because they realized that this was probably wasn't going to work. So EA basically told um, Bioware, hey, listen, just, just make the game you want to make, right? Um, start again, ma- make the game you want to make and make it well. So at this point in time, I think a lot of the... Um, I will look at Bioware and say, it's up to you guys now to prove it. I'm not really looking at EA. I'm looking at Bioware to to, to show me that they're, they're back to uh, to the original, sorry, to the high level of um, quality games that, that they used to make before. And I think they'll succeed. I'm, I'm not a pessimistic yeah. guy at all. I'm very optimistic about all these. And I think um, I think the guys making Dragon Age excited about the game. I know I was reading a, a report um, from a leaker and he said that like, the teams are pretty... Um, they're happy with the game. They're happy with the way the game is going. That's good. And from everything I've seen as well for Mass Effect, um, for Mass Effect Four, the new one coming out, um, I, I, I get really good vibes yeah. from it. I feel like everyone who's there, they know what they're doing. Like, like there's a clear goal that this is Mass Effect Four, and this is exactly what we're gonna do. There's no like miscommunication in terms of like, okay, should we try to do this? Should we try to do that? Um, I feel like they understand that we need to make this game story-based 
And once again, if you lock that down, everyone's going to be happy. Um, so, I mean, I don't want to say well done to EA for yeah. you know, stepping away. <laughs> they should have stepped away in the first place. <laughs> but um, I'm happy with this current trend. And once again, the, the new Star Wars game looks great. And it's probably going to sell really well. Another, another single-player game. It's just going to bolster this idea that single-player games um, are great and they can sell really well. I mean, we've seen God of War, The Last of Us. Um, there are so many. Uh, we've seen um, Ghost of Tsushima. And now we have Forspoken. That's going to do well. As, <laughs> I'm just joking. That game is <laughs> trash. I'm just, I'm just joking. Okay. Um, <laughs> some single-player games are going to hit. Yeah, some, some of them, yeah. Know. That's just how the dice rolls, man. Look is. at that. Did you? Yeah, Callisto was... Not it. That was not it. Callisto, yeah. Um, I, I think my issue with Callisto is, you know, just, I, I guess my question is like, how'd you get all that money in the first yeah. place? Yeah. Yeah. And like, he, who gave you that much money to, to make this game? Like, if, even if, um, even if the game's good, I, I, I didn't think it was, I didn't think it cost that, I didn't think, I didn't think that was it, how much it was going to cost to make, to be honest. So I thought it was a bit, it was a bit bizarre. Um, yeah, yeah, they, they should have budgeted it a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, clearly the scope got out of control. But EA, yeah. EA, by time, I'm just looking at it now. So we're getting, we're kind of getting into this cross promotion kind of thing where these games are becoming TV shows. They're they're coming out with spinoffs where it's it, it could be a show set in that universe like cyberpunk cyberpunk edge runners and we saw how that greatly benefited cyberpunk now we have the last of us show and that is greatly benefiting the last of us the witcher so on now obviously we we have our flops we all know our flops we got a, we got mortal kombat the halo series we got our flops and in 2021, Amazon bought the, bought the rights for Mass Effect. And that means they're going to come up with a Mass Effect show. It's not actually what confirmed you, yet. Oh, the, it's not confirmed yet? But but the leaks, I mean, from, from over here on Amazon, is probably the, either the front runner. Like, it's probably going to okay. be an Amazon TV show. Okay. Maybe. So, yeah, yeah, because it, it says, yeah, yeah, you're right. They managed the rights. I apologize. They, they got... They got yeah, they managed to secure the rights in late 2021, but they did not green light a show. So if they were to come out with a Mass Effect show, what would you want it? Just just would you want it to be about Commander Shepard? Or would you want it to be a game? Would you want it to be a show set in the Mass Effect world? Um, I'm, I'm happy we eat her, to be honest with you. Um, a lot of <laughs> a lot of fans <laughs> will tell you no. <laughs> not they say things like no, not my shepherd. I, I've seen the discord, the discord, um, discourse online, and some of them get really um, uptight about it. And I understand there's a bit of connection to command to shepherd, and they think shepherd should not be canonized in any way, shape, or form. Um, you know, whatever you do in these story points, you just kind of stay completely separate. So Jennifer, you separate. Um, the way the Modern War ended in your video game should not be uh, should not be shown in, in the show whatsoever. And in terms of the endings, red, blue, and green, um, you know, th there shouldn't be a decision on that. So basically, pe fans would want, let me not say fans, some people would want um, a prequel instead. Maybe a story about Anderson. Uh, maybe a story about the first contact war, which is extremely popular, actually. I think that would be a good one. So I'm, I'm all for a, 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 um, a story in the Mass Effect universe. In terms of Shepard, I'm also for that. 100%. And I think... That would be the smart play for um for but for Amazon or whoever who picks it up to to go for. Yeah, because you got you kind of and you gotta have to have a character that people like. You gotta have a face. You gotta have a face. Yeah, it just seems weird that you'd buy the rights to a huge franchise like this, and you would just you would just ignore the main character. Like it doesn't really make sense um, for me. And the, in terms of Commander Shepard, my response to everyone who doesn't really want Commander Shepard in the game is, your Shepard exists in the video game. When it comes to making a different medium, it's a different medium. Like it's not, it's not the same at all. <laughs> 
So you shouldn't be upset or offended that a different shepherd in a different medium exists. Like it just doesn't really make sense. I, I've never really, I could never grasp this. You know, my my shepherd is in the is is in the video game. <laughs> you yeah. know, it's, it's it's not relevant to any books or whatever it is. And whenever you 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 make a a, a movie or t- like whatever it is in a different medium, it's always going to be different. Even the Witcher books, right? They're based off the Witcher. But like it's the, the base of the Witcher books and the games are, are quite different. The game is like a basically choose your own adventure kind of story to an extent. And people would say, yeah, well, you didn't really create Geralt. Yeah, but you made decisions. You know, like your Geralt is very different from mine. My ending of my Geralt is very different from yours too as well. Um, so it's not a one-to-one comparison, but you, there is a bit of a comparison there. Um, so overall, like if Shepard is in the, um, the TV show, it's perfectly fine. And, you know, I also heard this talk a lot about, um, well, some fans will get with it and then it's not going to do well. Well, I don't believe so. I think fans will watch it anyway. Like, you you, you might say you're not going to watch it, but you're going to watch it. Like, well, Amazon, it, Amazon's effects with that Lord of the... I didn't watch the Lord of the Rings show, but their VFX mm-hmm. are pretty legit. I think it yeah, would... R- it Rings of nice. Power, yeah, exactly. It would look nice. C- can you imagine if you get the guys who made the Expanse and then you give them like a higher budget yeah. and you say, yo, make, make, us, make us a Mass Effect and it's going to be Commander Shepard. Of course you're going to want to watch it. Like, I, I want to watch I want to watch anything Mass Effect. Like, I don't care. Like, yeah. It could be about, you know, it doesn't have to be about humans. It could be about, you know, the Krogans yeah. or something. I want to watch it and see what it's all about. Like, you know, that that's how much um, I love that the franchise and, and that universe. So the idea that I wouldn't watch something because the main character looks different from my main... Like, I don't care if Shepard is, you know, white, black, woman, man, anything you want. Like, it's completely irrelevant to me um, at this point. I might have a preference, but that's a preference. Like, it's not going to stop me from watching it. And also, when people talk about, you know, like, well, it might not do as well because you need to kind of keep the fans on board. I know you don't really need to at all, to be honest. I know that doesn't sound great, but, you know... I give this example once of when you think about The Witcher, like the TV show, um, it's quite different from obviously the books and the games. So you could say like the fans from both um, from both sides were not probably 100% happy with, with the way things were, were um, depicted, right? But Netflix isn't gunning for the fans. They're gunning for like a wider audience. So I, I believe The Witcher, The Witcher 3 has sold over 30 million plus copies. And if you, th- if you look at the TV show, in the first five days or week, you had like 70 or 80 million viewers. Like, if all you wanted was the video game um, enthusiasts, people who play the game, well, that's 30 million plus and you're done. But you, you don't want the Witcher TV just to do 30 million. You wanted to do 80 million, which is what they did in the first like week or so. So you don't really need um, the core fan base. I mean, it's, it's good to have them. You don't really need them. You just need the kind of like the casuals to kind of come along, or you need the casuals to say, "Hey, this is a good show." I personally didn't think The Witcher was actually a great show. I thought it was okay. I thought it was same, good enough. Same. But when I'm talking to my my friends who don't play the game, their response was, "That was a good show. That was a great show. Like I really enjoyed that." So once again, yeah, okay, you might lose me, but how many people are you gaining in the process? You know. Yep. So um, TV show wise, they can do anything they want. This I just want a Mass Effect TV show. Like, yeah. God damn it! Like, I, th- I think it would be cool. I'm happy. I think it would be cool. Like, there's always, there's yeah, always, sure. when it comes to this stuff, there's always going to be a divide, like w- with anything, because th- I don't know the Man, internet. You know what's crazy the though? Like, just I, I feel that. like, I feel like in um, back like years ago when Mass Effect came out, like we all wanted a TV show. I feel like everyone was like, hell yeah, Mass Effect TV show would be cool. But all of a sudden, you fast forward to 2022 and three, everyone's just like, hell no. I, I just don't understand where that switch happened, you know? It's because um, of Halo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because of the relentlessly yeah. bad Halo TV shows that they keep putting out. <laughs> I, I watched this um I watched this video with this guy saying how like they should stop making anime adaptations and video game adaptations. And my, my I was just thinking to myself, why? Yeah. Like why why would you say that? They're not gonna stop like, superhero some really adaptations. Good, like so why should games yeah there's been some like like i mean there's arcane was great um that, that was a great show um even the um the castlevania tv yeah, series sonic was, was sonic as well the mo- sonic, sonic as well I, we helped, have the last of us i helped them more yeah we have the last of us coming out soon as well 
um like it's just it just baffles me that like people just get so sensitive over yeah. these kind of topics like no and the, i'm always going to stress the same thing it's in a different medium like it doesn't affect what the, the original medium yeah. in, in any way should perform like you know just keep it moving like I, i'm i'm a huge debt debt i'm a huge debt north fan right the anime it's even dragon ball z like i i couldn't care less if there's actually a live action adaptation like how does that um, affect the series as a whole to me. The, the, the anime is what I'm watching, and that's all I care about. So, so yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really weird take. Yeah. Um, Every everyone because you, you know the internet, everyone is just like so divided, which which is everyone wants to yeah. cry. Is that is that what you yeah, want to say? Like everyone, everyone wants to moan and cry. <laughs> you could say that. You could say that. Like it, it's always. I feel like the internet and really, it's either somebody or humans we're all human and we just react the same because this is a good time to bring this up. Hogwarts legacy. Are you buying it? How are you going to put me on the spot like that? <laughs> I'm, joking. The first I'm joking. episode, um, baby, you already know. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm joking. I'm, I'm, I'm buying it. If it's, I'm likely buying it from based on what I'm seeing. I'm buying it. If it's a good game. Um, like, my, my decision buying this game will be solely on the fact that if it's a good game or not, and that's just and that's just it. Really, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna get into um, the backstory of it. Like I've always, you know, as much as I like Mass Effect, you know, one of the things I always say is like when it comes to even reading books and this idea of um, thinking outside of you know the norm. So sci-fi and fantasy. Um, it was Harry Potter that really pushed me. Um, on that like i remember reading when i was a kid and my mind was just blown yeah like, man like, like me oh, and God, me and my boys in elementary adventure. school we were all on it all on it dude i knew things changed when i was in school right and we had like reading time or whatever like yeah, ssr just, i think like there was rain <laughs> it was raining outside so we couldn't go outside and play football so like, it's just like everyone just pick a book from this big stash and i was like and i was like oh this harry potter thing that i've um, heard about like let me just read it and I was reading it, man, and I knew I was hooked the day when um, it was raining. No, it wasn't raining. We could go out and play, uh, play football or whatever. I wanted to stay in and read the book. Like that's how like engrossed I was in this um, in this yeah. world. So, so um, once again, ju- just like Mass Effect, you know, you you take my favorite genre and sci-fi, and you take um, the the ability to kind of make these um, decisions. Um, you know, role play adventure games. Put them together, you get Mass Effect. Like I'm in. Um, same thing for Harry Potter. You take fantasy and you take one of my favorite um, stories of all time, and you give me this adventure to kind of make my own world. And that's what I love about the game. It's my own character's creation. It's not like you know Harry Potter. Like you know, I mean Harry's alright, but yeah, he's, he's yeah. I'm actually not his biggest fan. To be honest, yeah. Yeah, I thought I was a bit of a douche um, in the in the books. He, yeah, I didn't really like him. I mean, he was cool, but then I towards the yeah. end, like, yeah, you, you're kind of iffy. But like now, I, I get to create my own character. Like, of course, well, one hundred percent. Like, I want I want this game to succeed. Um, one thing I will say is that the the story surrounding the game, in terms of you know, um, should you buy the game? Should you not buy the game? Is it morally right or not? Um, anyone who's trying to cancel the game, um. If 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 this game flops, it has nothing to do whatsoever with people trying to cancel this game. The, the people who want this game gone, who don't want to play this game, we're never gonna buy this game. That's just that's just the truth of it. Um, like you know, we have Activision Blizzard. You know, they were um being sued for different reasons, and hey, the the best Call of Duty game came out and sold really well, right? Um, I think these people, and one of my friends, she she did bring it up. She mentioned how, oh, the, are you still gonna play this Call of Duty games? I don't play Call of Duty. I just sort of like this doesn't. It's not really relevant to me. But gamers don't really care about this topic as much. And I think the people who care about this topic, they're not the gaming majority who would have bought the game in the first place. I have Harry Potter fans. I, I sorry, I'm friends with Harry Potter fans who are passionate about this topic, but they don't play games. They, they would boycott this game probably, but they don't play games, so they're not even that relevant. So I don't I don't see a situation where Hogwarts Legacy is gonna get um 
it's gonna do good. I think I believe it's gonna yeah. do well. It's, and I don't see a situation like the where they're gonna say selling game on Steam. It, it's definitely gonna do well. Um, as long as the game is good. Right now, I think everyone's. If, you, if I was to look at the game now, I'm gonna I'm looking at like, like maybe an eight out of ten, and hopefully that that kind of maintains or becomes like maybe closer towards a nine. But um, but yeah, I don't see a situation where this game does bad because people are saying don't buy the game. Like no, it's yeah. same thing I, with I Bayonetta just, as well. I, I didn't. I just. I just Wait, my bad. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say same to me. Buy it, buy it. Not so as well. Um, and people were saying, "Don't buy this game. Don't buy this game." I, the people who want to play Bayonetta are gonna buy Bayonetta. That's just it. So yeah, yeah. Like I, what I find, what I find whole really weird about the situation, is because, like you, we we I, I do a lot of reading. Now, when it comes to like my reading, I usually do stuff on like, like I, I like to learn about something so like it would be something about history or it would be something about a certain industry so like the media and i'm not saying i'm not saying this is what's happening but it's all it's also possible that they just planted all this stuff <laughs> for people to react to but on in that chance that they did not i just find it weird how people want to do this morality thing when we all know guys if we're 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 not the haves we're not the rich and we're all just trying to enjoy what we can out of life and if we, we don't want to play that game you don't want to play that game because those people that that say this whole thing where it's like hey you shouldn't buy this game because of this and that it's like yes that what she said I I don't really get into it. She's entitled to her own opinion. If you disagree with her, disagree with her, I feel like you should do something about that. And I hope you do. But this whole thing where you, it's the shame, it's I don't really get it because oh, we all buy we all buy like iPhones. It, we could go down the rabbit hole of how iPhones get made. How N- Nintendo just got uh Saudi Arabia just invested in nintendo so it's like let's not play that game that that, that's my thing let's not play that game because we're all we all buy things that are not that don't really align with our morality so what what, what's really the point over arguing with this people are um they're very selective of when they want to be passionate about a particular topic um you, you're never going to be consistent across the board. That's one thing I've noticed about a lot of people who try to maybe virtual signal or whatever it may be. Um, and to be honest, I think that's that's kind of fine, right? I feel you can be passionate about every topic, and that's fine. Yeah. I, I think the issue is when you try to tell people how to feel, then they can come and critique you and say, well, hold on a second. Like, I, I see you care about this topic, but how about this topic that means a lot to me as well that you clearly don't care about at all? You don't, you don't give a shit. So um, I don't have any friends who would tell me not to um, buy the game. And they probably wouldn't be my friend if they did in the first place. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, it's just that's such a weird-ass take um, to yeah. tell me that. Like, let me come to that um, conclusion myself, right? Um, you know, I've, I've evaluated the situation probably and I've, I've chosen to buy it. But I think August Legacy, like it's, it's very different because it's made by like a, a whole development team that has, you know, no connection with JK Rowling anyway. Yeah. Um, that's number one. And uh, number two, the maybe JK Rowling has already gotten paid. Sorry. <laughs> the team is in Utah. Like, it's, <laughs> it's, completely, it's so like, weird. It's so different. And I think even if the product, if the product itself, if you said the product was, you know, um, I don't want to use this word to get maybe you demonetize or whatever, <laughs> but like nice. the product was um had all these type of issues in it, but maybe they were actually like, you know, voicing these opinions like ha 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 yeah these people are this and that whatever it is, yeah. I, th- that makes more sense to me when the product itself is actually just like clean. Um, I don't know, it's it's so different. Um, yeah, you know, I I think there's th- th- there's better battles to fight. But listen, I want to say there's better battles to fight, but everyone's just gonna fight about everything. Like this is th- th- yeah. this is expected. I had a um I I did, I did a podcast with a few guys, and you know we were all cool with the idea of um 
of Hogwarts Legacy, there was one guy who wasn't. Um, and his way of, you know, circumventing this J.K. Rowling thing was to, was to purchase the game um, in GameStop eventually when it's, you know, a used copy or so. And I did hear, I, I did hear about this take that people were saying that I'm going to pirate the game. And it's like, what? <laughs> like, yeah, don't. they want to pirate the game. It's like, I don't understand why. I don't want my money to go to J.K. Rowling, but you don't want it to go to the developers too who made the game. Like, so you, you're going to, like pirating is an an immoral thing to do. It's immoral. <laughs> I like I don't understand. Like it's such a contradiction here. Yeah, um, it's, it's a joke. It's a joke. Yeah, man. It's it's whatever. That that that's the internet. That is that is the ugliness and the most annoying yeah. part of the but internet. But I f- I feel like the way it's so extreme these days. Um, I'm hoping that uh, as the years go by, people realize that like they're just being too extra. And everything yeah. kind of like everyone takes a step back and things Definitely. things become a bit more normal. Definitely. All right. So I don't I don't want to take too much of your time. So let's end things with one more. One more. Now, did you catch the Xbox Direct? Did you catch it? I did, man. And um I think this is Microsoft's first win of this year. Um, well, actually, maybe Monster Hunter Rise coming on Game Pass, I think, was probably like the first one. I think that's a really good catch. That's a really good get. Um, having that game that's out on you know P- PS4 as well and the other consoles, uh, and be it being on Game Pass, it is really good for them. But the direct was here's the thing about the direct that I thought was really dope. Um, when you set expectations, you can't be judged outside of those expectations. So if you were to ask me. Microsoft killed it. They killed it because they, they told you the format. So now we're going to judge them based on that format. They told you the games are going to show up. So now we're just going to judge it based on the games showing up and how those games look like. The games the, the games looked great. Um, Forza looked great. Minecraft is... I'm really, really interested in that game. I thought that um, looked... That, that was a surprise for me. That so was interesting. Um, I want to learn so much more about the game. I, for me personally, that was the most interesting game of the show. Um. I mean, Elder Scrolls is Elder Scrolls, yeah. And guess what? It didn't take too much time either. It was just kind of in and out. So they kind of understood that, like, you don't really, you don't really need to see this too much. Yeah. Redfall, um, from what they showed, I will say I'm a little bit skeptical, right? Because we'll I'm watching it, and it didn't really blow me away. I, to be honest with you, I was more excited when I read the reports that it was more like Far Cry 2, and they had all this stuff going on. So now I'm watching the game plan, I'm like, I don't know, it just seems so empty and... Like it, it just it seems I don't want to I don't want to use this word in a bad way, but it seems a bit one dimensional, and I'm hope like, I'm wrong on that. Like it it will be fun, fun. Sorry, just because it's co op, right? But it didn't blow me away. Like based on what I've seen, I'm thinking this is not the killer hit. It's probably gonna be eight out of ten. Yeah, I, I just gotta I just gotta say this one thing about Redfall that that that's been bothering me. And I and I a hundred percent agree with the hardcore arcane fans when they say this game is very far left field from their previous works. Now, the the thing that has been really just I have not been digging about Redfall is the combat. The arcane games, they have a sense of like creativity when it comes to the abilities and It's not even just the creativity, how they synergize with each other and how you can just approach things different ways. Now, I don't know if it's because we've been seeing early builds of the playable characters, but I'm just not seeing that. Like the only cool thing I've seen is the elevator, the elevator move with Layla and the other characters, but I haven't been seeing it. It's like, I know Deathloop was hit with, it was mixed. I like Deathloop personally, but even Deathloop had the creativeness with the abilities. You had freaking like over seven abilities that you could swap. Like one would turn you invis. One would have. Well, one was telekinesis. One was uh, I forget. Like you could throw. I, I, it, it was a whole bunch of abilities. But with Redfall, it it, it just seems like guns and. Uh, like the the same type of abilities we always we're always used to. I think with the abilities, um, 
I won't, I'm not judging them too much on their abilities yet because there's a lot that we have to see. Like, you know, there's, you know, hidden abilities or special abilities that they're probably going to reveal later on or maybe I should play the game, right? Um, I think my main issue was, okay, I'm not seeing too much of the story and you guys are going to write in stories, <laughs> you know? And <laughs> it just, it seems like, I'm hoping what they did is they created the story and the world and then, you know, it's, it's, it's there as opposed to like, okay, let's kind of create this world where you can do different activities. And then let's kind of like touch on the story a little bit. Like I, I want this game to be a arcane story focused game, but there's all these activities I could do to the side. Um, the more I thought about it and the more I saw them do things like, oh, there's strongholds where you can go and, you know, um, you know, take out a vampire camps and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, it sounds sound, 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 sound very Ubisoft like. You know, I was thinking, hmm, like it's not a bad thing per se, but I was I'll say I wasn't impressed with the with the showing um at all. I was I thought it was okay. Yeah. I so my mind I was thinking Same. like, yo, man, I was pegging this game to be a potential nine out of ten, but now it's it's like it just might be an eight or so, yeah, and, and that's and, still and a good again, score. After the reports, after the reports, I was like, oh, this doesn't seem generic. Like when they were yeah. talking about it in the in, in the interviews, I was like, oh. This is sounding really good. And then when I saw it, I was like, mm, it's still giving me that, like, it'll be fun, but I'll, I'll yeah. probably stop playing it after a month. Yeah, I'm thinking that for me, the, the story should hit and also the um, the co-op should hit. And I think, I think the co-op will give it legs. I, one thing I will say is this. This will be their most played game. Like, this, out of all the arc- arcane games, this is the one that everyone is probably... Um, all, all eyes on now the fact that it's probably exclusive to xbox might hurt it a little bit right um but then there's game pass which is going to offset that so it's, it's probably the, the most arcane game that everyone's interested in but um whether it's a smash hit or not i don't know um yeah. we'll wait and see yeah but overall the, the the showcase microsoft did was um it was really dope judging them based on what they um what they showed and i think that the main thing now is like when i saw hi-fi hi-fi that's what it's called right Yep, hi-fi um, rush. Hi-fi rush. I, th- I thought it was cool, you know. But but here's the, the killer for me was when they um said, yo, it's dropping now. And I think that was perfect. That because was... you set expectations low. So when you set expectations low, anything you do beyond that is always going to be a hit. And when, and when you drop a game, day one, uh, like on the spot on Game Pass, people can buy it. It's perfect. It doesn't have to be a big game. It can just be an interesting game. And how the leak, because the leak actually, this was one of the few times where the leak left out, like, the biggest part. Because Hi-Fi Rush got leaked the day before it got revealed. And it was only concept art. So everyone was like, uh, "This, no one would have expected something like this to drop. So then when they were like, yeah, it's dropping tonight, it was... It, that, that was a really good mic drop moment that I've seen from any type of showcase, state of play, direct. It, it was a good move. That was a cold and, move from. And Xbox. the thing about Hi Fi Rush is that like it, it's not one of those games that needs um a good a great build up. You don't need to market it as much. Um, you know, the, the marketing is this game has dropped today. Go yeah. play it. That's the market. Like yeah. as soon as they said it's dropped, I'm like, yo, let me let me go and Game Pass and download this game and see what's up, right? And you and you you check Steam sales and like it's doing really well there as well. You know, I won't be surprised if Microsoft comes out at some point and says Hi-Fi Rush has been one of our blah 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 most played yeah. game or, or whatever it is. So I think Microsoft is learn is learning from this, right? Because if this this works out well, okay, well, when next can we shadow drop a game? You know, can we do it for other franchises? Um. I don't think they'll do it for Starfield now. Yeah. Crazy. But, um, no. you know, it's definitely something that, that, that they need to, to take forward. This has been their best. I dare say this has been the best showcase because, like I said, whenever you go beyond the expectations you set, you're always going to win, like 100%. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I was talking to a guy on, um, on Discord, and one of the things he said was like, Man, I wasn't that into it. I'm like, and he was talking about like, oh, Forza ain't that really into, ain't that really into Minecraft. Um, you know, high fi rush not really my kind of thing. And he basically said he wasn't into any of the kind of games that really showed. My response was, then why did you watch? 
This, yeah. They, they told you exactly what they were going to show. Like, why would you, you know, it's, it's like Sony saying, like, we're going to show Forspoken or Final Fantasy. And you know, in, you're into those games. You're into, like, you're more into shooters. And then you watch it and you complain. They're like, ah, they're, they're like, why are you watching for? You know, Good. like, and, and that's the key thing there. You set expectations. So the people who actually care about either Xbox or these games will watch. And the people who don't, like, I mean, do something else. Like, why are you watching it in the first place? Yeah. I don't understand. There'll so, be the um, people who have been th- living This is under Xbox's the show. first win. Yeah. And it's in January. Well done. Yo, what's good? You already know I'm Ken Wall. This wasn't how the video was originally supposed to end. You already know I ran into some post production problems. Hey, that alliteration there. Three P words. Anyways. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I put in a lot of work, and this is going to be the first of many. Talk a good game, new series coming at you guys. Please leave me your suggestions, topics you want me to cover. It will help so much to make the show better. So go right ahead. Thank you guys for watching, and have a good one. I'll see you guys soon.